What's up, people? Welcome to the session. How is everyone doing? I sincerely hope that all of you guys are taking care of yourself. My name is Anup, and welcome to yet another Sprint Tech series for ICC 10th. Right now, currently, we are doing for ICC 10th. So, welcome to the session. Today, we'll be doing uh, current electricity. We have divided this chapter into two different sessions. So, this will be the first one where we will be solving some questions based on current electricity. And there's another one that will be coming out tomorrow as well. So, watch out for that. Make sure that you subscribe right away so that uh, you are notified of all the upcoming sessions as well so once again a very warm welcome to every one of you guys with that said let's begin the topic for today people so current electricity what are the topics that we'll be looking into uh, charges uh, charge and current potential and potential difference ohms law resistance and factors affecting resistance as well then we have emf terminal voltage and internal voltage this will be doing in the next session combination of resistors electrical energy and power and heating effect of electric current and power rating so these are the topics that we'll be doing and this is the physics schedule people so we had uh, already done so many chapters from force to spectrum we've already done all those chapters so make sure that you check out all those videos it will be there uh, in the description you can click on the sprint text videos and check out all the videos of every single subject there you know that has been put up so far so physics is taken up by me uh, right now uh, we are in current electricity so we have a couple more chapters left out so make sure that you subscribe to the channel to get notified of that Bali is taken up by Ambika ma'am uh, right now I believe she's doing the chapter of photosynthesis which will be coming out tomorrow and it'll go on all the way till 27th of Feb endocrine system chemistry is taken up by Anubha ma'am uh, it'll go on till 27th of Feb again that is organic chemistry so guys lots and lots of amazing stuff are coming out so make sure that you subscribe make sure you hit the like button make sure that you hit the bell icon as well because there are some amazing questions which will be solving in these sprint tech series because these sprint tech series is a very good uh, uh, you know uh, advantage which will not only help you to understand the concept better but will also give you an idea of what kind of questions you can expect from the particular chapter english was taken up by shreda ma'am we have angana ma'am taking up sst and then gopal sir taking up go uh, you know uh, maths as well so again all of these sessions will be going on the 26th and 27th of feb sprint x series make sure that you're a part of the squad right so that's it people let's begin today's session so again I want everyone to get your pens and papers ready because these are some, you know, we are, we'll be solving questions from the previous uh, year question people, past year question papers, the past 10 years question paper. We'll be picking out some amazing questions from those. So make sure that you try to do those questions with me. Uh, also watching the video right now, who's, who are watching it with me, who are premiered, uh, when it's, whenever it's getting premiered, make sure that you put on the answers in the chat box as well and, you know, help your friends out a little. Make sure that you put on the answers in the comment section and let us know how the sessions are going on. How is it helping you? Let us know all of that, right? So this was the question in the last session. I believe, okay, this was actually, uh, yeah, this is the question from the last session. Sound, what is an echo state to conditions for an echo to take place? Echo is nothing but the reflection of sound which is heard after 0.1 seconds. That is what is called as echo. Two conditions that you need for echo to take place. One is that the distance between the object and the person or the, or the you know the obstacle and the person should be at least uh, 17 meters and the second uh, you know condition is that the sound should be loud enough so that the intensity of sound should be high enough or loudness should be uh, high there should be enough energy so that they can hear the sound and you should be able to hear the sound only after 0.1 second only if you hear the sound after 0.1 second that is when you hear the echo otherwise you do not right so that is the answer for this question so these are the homework problems we have Anshika who gave a detailed explanation of all of those amazingly well and keep it good though, keep it the good work. Then we have Bhargavi as well, who gave the answer, who, who came very close with second. Not bad guys, amazingly well. Amazingly well, people. And Chicken Bhargavi, absolutely wonderful. So with that said, people, let's now begin electricity. All right. So I want everyone to focus up. I want everyone to solve the questions with me. Uh, maybe there are there are a lot of theory questions uh, that is asked in this uh, in this particular topic in this particular session, if uh, especially. So what I want you guys to do is even if you're not able to write it down, at least uh, you know tell the definition to yourself in your mind. Right? That that is the best way to practice. Right now you need that practice. So let's go ahead and try to solve this question, guys. This question was taken up from 2018 board exam. It appeared in uh, ICC 2018 boards. It's a two mark question. In your exam, you can take up to two to three minutes, but we'll try to do it in less than one minute. That's what the whole point of sprint is about, right? We are trying to do it in less, the least amount of time possible. All right, the question is this. 
state whether the resistivity of a wire changes with the change in thickness of the wire yes or no let me know what is the answer in the chat box all those who are watching the video right now put it down in the comment section as well the answer to this question guys is definitely not see guys resistivity is the property of the material which tells us how much is the resistance offered by a particular material of unit cross section and unit length so it does not matter whether you know the dimension whether it's thick or whether it's thin it does not matter whether it's uh, you know whether it's long or whether it's short it does not matter at all because resistivity is a property of the material so yeah, yes people the right answer would be definitely not resistivity does not depend on those factors it does not depend on the dimension of the material per se because resistivity is nothing but what the property of the material it is one of the characteristic of a material which tells you or which tells you how much is the resistance offered by a material of unit length and unit cross section so it does not depend on the dimension at all right i hope you got it people if you did not know the answer for this one there you know it all right moving on to the second question here is another one such an amazing i mean such an easy question now 2013 board exam a question that has been repeated so many times in the past exams state ohms law and a metal wire okay the, the second part of the question is a little uh you know a little hard case i mean this is a very common question though very common type of question a metal wire of resistance 6 ohm is stretched so that the length is increased to twice its original length Calculate its new resistance. Options are 24 ohms, 12 ohms, 10 ohms, and 15 ohms. It's a two mark question, two to three minutes. We'll try to do it in less than one. Now, the first part of the question: what is Ohm's law? Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a circuit uh, is, e is basically proportional to the potential difference. So current flowing, I don't think I'll write the entire thing, but yeah, you get the point, people. In your exam, you have to obviously define the whole thing. But current flowing uh, in a conductor or in a uh, conducting wire is proportional. Current flowing is proportional proportional to the potential difference potential potential difference if and if and only if the physical condition the if there's no physical change like for example as long as the temperature is kept constant you mentioned that as well so as long as the temperature is constant because if you change the temperature then yes uh the there will be some you know there'll be some change because of the resistance changing so as long as the temperature is kept constant the physical condition like temperature is kept constant the current flowing through a circuit would uh be proportional to the uh potential difference so basically the form if you remember the formula v is equal to ir is the formula where v is nothing but the potential difference i is nothing but the current and r is nothing but the resistance well yeah second part of the question so uh, it's actually v is proportional to i in order to remove the proportionality sign we are introducing the constant which is nothing but r which is nothing but the resistance all right second question a metal wire of resistance 6 ohm is stretched so that the length is increased to twice its original length calculate its new resistance so i'm going to remove this part guys i'm going to erase this one and i'm going to solve this question for you guys now this is a very interesting question it might take a little longer than one minute uh, i'll try to do it in as less time possible but to in order for you to ex to understand the question how to do it how to tackle these questions i might go in depth and explain it a little bit more deeper i could do it in you know maybe four to five steps but for you to understand it i'm going to do it take a little bit more time so yeah guys resistance is given as six ohms all right now this is the they're saying that the new length i'll take it as l dash is basically twice the twice the original length first of all once you know this guys you can do it two ways i'm going to show you the first way which i find it much more easier much more easy to understand so you can go with this one or uh the the other method is also given uh as a uh you know in the pdf so you can download that and check it out as well all right so yeah now if see the question is this if i have a wire if i have a wire and i extend the length of it the volume still remains constant although the length is changing the volume remains constant so i can say that the new area i have to find out the new area so what will be the formula if you remember uh, volume is nothing but area into length so the uh, original area uh, what to say area into length is equal to basically the new area into the new length because the volume remains constant so whatever is the new length the volume still sh should still be the same so i'm trying to find out what is the new uh, new area right now so a into l is equal to a dash into 2l because l dash is nothing but 2l so what is a dash ll gets cancelled so a dash is equal to a by 2 so if the length is increased by twice if the, if the length is increased twice then the area becomes half of it now you can directly remove you can directly you know put it uh you don't have to you know do all these calculation if you want you can directly put it and just state the facts 
but yes for all those who do not understand how it came out this is how you get it because volume remains constant and because of that you're finding out the new area now that you've got this guys now uh put it down on the equation r dash that is a new resistance is equal to rho l by a rho l dash by a dash so rho into l dash is nothing but 2l divided by a is nothing but uh, a by 2 so uh 2 goes to the numerator so what will you get 4 into rho l by a is what you're gonna get now what is rho l by a because the initial resistance is given as 6 ohm so what is that r is nothing but what rho l by a that is the formula which is nothing but 6 ohms so that is nothing but 6 so substitute that over here so 4 into 6 is what you need which is nothing but 24 ohms that's all i know it took a little more than one minute not uh not ideal but still guys it's for your own understanding that i had to go with this one so the right answer to this question will be 24 ohms now this is one way to do it this is the definition of ohm's law the electric current flowing through a conductor the wire is directly proportional to the voltage uh difference across the conductor wire and if there's no change in the physical conditions like temperature length area of cross section etc and this is the second this is the second question so again guys now here they've done a you know they've pretty much done this exact same thing but uh here they've actually divided r2 by r1 so that is the only difference that you see over here they've divided r1 by r2 and uh, you know substitute the values accordingly so you can go with this one or you can go with the first method it's totally up to you guys whichever you feel is easy you can go with that right so that is the answer to the second question guys two more question from 2013 board exam Moving on to the third question. Now, this is a very common type of question, guys. So practice as many questions as you can for this one because there are a lot of questions that has been asked based especially on this kind of, uh, you know, the weather where the length is increased or where the uh, area is reduced by ha half. So make sure that you put in a little bit more effort on these kind of questions. All right. Moving on to the third question. It's a 2008 question, 2008 board exam. Two, to two marks again. Two to three uh, minutes. We'll try to do it in less than one. The question is this. Sketch a graph to show the change in potential difference across the ends of an ohmic conductor and the current flowing in it. Label the axis of the uh, axis, all right? It's not axis, it's axis of your graph. And what does the slope of the graph represent? All right, it's a very simple question, guys. See, guys, in an ohmic conductor, so in an ohmic conductor, the graph was basically a VI graph, all right? Voltage versus current graph. So on your X axis, you have uh, current on your Y axis, your voltage, all right? So voltage, which is represented as V and current, which is represented as I, all right? Okay, so I is what you have in your X axis and this is your Y axis. So these are your uh, X and Y coordinates. Now, sorry, X and Y axis. Now the question is in an ohmic conductor, what would the what is the uh, you know what would be the graph like? What is it, what does the graph look like? See, is an, first of all, what is an ohmic conductor? An ohmic conductor is one which follows Ohm's law, all right? And according to Ohm's law, as you increase the current, uh, as you increase the potential difference, the current should also increase. So according to if it's if it's a resistor which follows or which is an if it's an ohmic conductor, then the graph would basically be a straight line. It's going to be a linear curve. Why? Because it's an ohmic conductor. Now, to answer the second part of the question, what does the slope in the graph represent? The slope in this kind of graph represents the resistance. It represents the resistance because what is the slope over here? It's nothing but uh, uh, delta V by delta I that is change in the voltage divided by change in current which would give you nothing but the resistance itself right so that would be the answer for this question it's an easy two mark question just have to draw the graph it is a linear graph so it's going to be a straight line uh, that the uh, slope over on this case would give you the resistance of this circuit that's all guys so that is the third question 2008 an easy question yet again moving on to the fourth one guys 2007 this time Four, fourth question it's two more question yet again two to three minutes uh, two to three minutes in your exams we'll try to do it in less than one minute the question is this the vi graph the velo the voltage uh, current graph for a series combination and for a parallel combination of two resistors is shown in the figure below so it is a you know it is basically a two graph represented as one one is a series combination the other is a parallel combination which one of the two or a or b represents the parallel combination give reason for your answer which of these is parallel and which of these would be series the answer to this question guys is that a would be parallel a would be definitely a parallel connection you know why because people think about it the steeper the curve more is the resistance the steeper the curve more is the resistance so if you have another graph let's say which is c which is much more steep, steeper than uh, A or B, that would have greater resistance because why? Greater the slope, greater the resistance. 
This, because the slope in this graph shows represents the resistance. That is what we just saw right now. Voltage versus current graph, the slope would show you the resistance. Now, remember this, guys. In series connection, the resistance is going to be more. In series connection, the resistance will be more. Whereas in parallel connection, the resistance is going to be less. Since A has a lesser slope, the slope is actually much more lesser, or the you know you can say that it's it's a lesser you know uh, because okay you can say that because B is more steeper than A, you can say that B is a series combination and A on the other hand is a parallel combination. That's all. That is how you state the answer. The reason is because of this because the steeper the curve, the more is the resistance, and we know that in parallel connection the resistance is going to be less. And in series connection, the resistance is going to be more. So whichever is less steeper, that would be series. That will be the parallel connection. So yeah, here in this case, A will be the parallel connection. So A represents the parallel combination because A is less steeper than B, and so uh, because uh, you know uh, in parallel connection, the resistance is less. You can see that A is the right answer. That's it. Fourth question, people. I hope you guys are having uh, you know fun solving these questions i know that the questions might seem a little trivial might seem like you've seen these questions before but the more you practice the better it is guys because obviously the more you are exposing yourself to these kind of questions the better you would you'll have a better muscle memory so you don't have to think about all these answers as soon as you see the answers it's like you know it's like uh, brushing your teeth or it's like you know uh, playing cricket uh, you know uh, what is it when you play it every single day you have that muscle memory which will enable you to you know Oh, recollect the answers right there and then and that is what this is all about right so we will if you are enjoying the session so far take a minute subscribe to the channel hit the like button as well and also guys if you want to be a part of us if you want to have you know uh, such sessions you know such interactive sessions and learn with the best of the best teachers and at the same time gain 100% knowledge as well as gain 100% uh, marks in every single subject there is all you have to do is guys click on the link and enroll into the Vedantu Pro subscription courses. Let me tell you what these courses are basically. So the subscription course is basically something like you know Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime and all that. So where, if you take a one month subscription, you can watch how many of movies or how many of series you want, right? In the same way, guys, these subscription courses also work in the, in the exact same manner. So once you enroll into the subscription course, the live subscription course, you have unlimited live session, and all of those sessions will have some amazing quiz questions, and you'll have a lot of fun because the the thing is this case the questions uh, or the class itself is very interactive you can actually talk with the teachers you can interact with your friends so it's a very fun friend class and you'll have an amazing set of quiz questions which will not only test you to the best of your abilities but also help you to understand the concept much more better and these quiz quizzes are such a way that it is designed such a way that you actually have an opportunity to compete with the rest of the world and see how good you are in that subject you can understand what is your weakness you can understand your strength all by taking up those quiz questions because it's a unique opportunity where you don't have just students from one state or from the from just india alone you have students from the entire world and you have to you have an opportunity to compete with every one of them and yes guys all of these live sessions are recorded so the the way that it's recorded is such you know it's such an amazing factor that it's not just recording we are not just giving you the recordings so even those recordings have an interactive replay sessions where you can actually take the quiz even while watching the replay while watching the replay also you can take the quiz and still check out the leaderboards and see how good you have been performing in that particular subject and if you want to improve your timings that is also you know a good way to go about it with all of these guys you have uh, you know you can download all the premium content check out all the handwritten notes so everything that is there everything that, is, that you need all the key parameters that you need for success all of that is right here itself so everything that you need would be covered over here with this case you have an opportunity to compete to complete all your doubts or to get all your doubts cleared inside the session itself because you don't have just one teacher to help you clear your doubts in fact with the master teacher you will also have the class teacher to help you clear every single doubt of yours so you never walk out of the class with uh, doubts because no matter how many doubts you have 50 100 be 200 does not matter all your doubts will be cleared right there and then itself and all those students who are looking around for tests and assignments to you know practice you don't have to go anywhere people because those are also covered right here itself you have some amazing tests and assignments and the 
questions that are chosen in these tests and assignments are amazing because those questions are taken from your previous year question papers, from your sample papers, from your ISOs, NSOs, everything that gives you some amazing questions will not only help you to think better but also to push your limits. All of those kind of questions are what is chosen in these tests and assignments. So you have an opportunity to practice those and get, you know, make yourself better every single day. With all of these guys, if you have the time, you can also take up or take part in more than 5,000 plus micro courses and crash courses all for free. Everything is a part. It's like a single package, it's like a one-stop shop for everything that is uh, related to education. Link in the description. So what you have to do is basically guys open up, uh, you know, the, uh, what to say, you have to basically go to, uh, go to YouTube first. So open up the Vidanto 9th and 10th channel. So let me just show you this. So how do you do 9th and 10th? Wait a second. Yeah, I did not write Vedanta. It's, uh, Vedanta 9th and 10th Eng uh, English channel. So go on to that. First of all, subscribe to the channel uh, because this is, uh, you know, I've opened up in, uh, uh, what is it, in incognito. I can't really uh, subscribe to it. So yeah, all you have to do is click on any of the videos that is there. Click on any of the videos. Scroll down, go to the description, show more. So you have an option called a subscribe to Vedanta Pro right now. So what you have to do is click on the link. It will take you to another page, the Vedanta Pro subscription page. So you have to choose which grade do you belong to let's say you said you're in 10th grade so you have options from 1 to 12 13th grade let's say you're in 10th grade they'll ask you which board do you belong to let's say you're in ICC or CBC once you click on it all of the details that, that whatever I just told you everything would be available over here clear doubts notes assignments chapter wise tests uh, online life classes test series and uh, assignments assignments and study materials with the teachers who will be teaching you appreciate sir harsh PM sir amrit sir with the results that we had last year with students in icc ending up scoring 98 percent 98.2 percent all of those amazing results can also be seen over here and with that guys you also have uh you know you can check out everything that is uh the faqs the frequently asked questions all of that every everything that you will need all of that would be given over here itself so from here what you have to do is click on proceed to pay and then go on and pay for the course but here's the thing guys these it's uh right now guys right now we have uh, an offer going on so basically guys what's happening is that that 2,996 uh, 2,699 is basically the base price of the course but if you use the coupon code AME Pro this is my coupon code AME Pro if you use, use, use my coupon code AME Pro you get a flat 50% discount on those courses and the price drops from 2,699 to a mere 1,349 rupees so again guys it's only valid for the next couple of days so make sure that you click on the link and end into those courses so in that one month people if you just think about it in that one month duration you have attended about 200 sessions roughly so that means that per session you are paying just 6.7 rupees per live session which is basically less than a packet of lace that you pay for 10 you pay 10 rupees for and enjoy for 10 minutes so once you enroll into the courses guys this is what it will look like so you can actually check out all the upcoming sessions over here whatever sessions are coming out you know uh, you have throughout the day you can check that out these are the past sessions you can check out all the past sessions and you can also check out the replay of every single sessions by clicking on the replay option you can get the notes whatever notes are there you can download all of those notes every single handwritten note all of that can be downloaded so yes guys as i was saying you can check out all the courses that you're you know eligible for you can enroll into whichever course you want and check out all the you know courses as well so that's it people let's get back into the topic that is the uh that is the link again the link is given in the description as well as in the pin comment section the coupon code is ame pro to avail the 50 percent discount again guys it's only valid for the next couple of days to not miss out on this opportunity to study with the best of the best teachers and also help you you know help yourself get better marks or get better every single day with that said let's get back to the questions moving on to the fifth question taken from 2016 board exam is a three mark question three to five minutes we'll try to do it in less than two minutes the question is this a music system draws a current of 400 milliampers when connected to a 12 volt battery. What is the resistance of the music system? That is the first part of the question. Second part of the question is the music system is left playing for several hours and finally the battery voltage drops and the music stops playing when the current drops to 320 milliampers. At what battery voltage does the music system stop playing? It's an amazing question. It's a very simple question. Just by using one single formula, people, you can solve the entire question. All right, first part of the question is, first of all, the current is given as what? Current is given as 400 milliampers. 
convert that to amperes divided by 1000 so that will be what 0.4 amperes and voltage is given as what is given as 12 volts it's a 12 volt battery right so first of all calculate, calculate the resistance the resistance is equal to v by i uh, it's 12 by 0 0.4 uh, you know which will give you 30 ohms right 12 by 0 0.4 you get is 30 ohms so this is the resistance offered by the music now music player now to answer the second part of the question when if it is allowed to play for a very very long time and you see that uh, you know uh, it the voltage keeps on dropping because you know uh, the uh, what to say uh, it's a it's a simple battery so this the voltage keeps on dropping and you see that the current drops down to 320 milliampers from 400 amp milliampers it's dropped down it drops down to 320 amperes so at what voltage does the music stop playing now in this case guys the current changes from 320 amperes milliampers through to uh, 400 milliampere so 320 milliampere so in terms of uh, amperes so divided by 1000 that will be 0 0.32 amperes would be what is the current voltage is what you're supposed to find out resistance you know it as 30 ohms because that is not going to change find out the answer people so uh, if you have to find out the voltage voltage is equal to what uh, uh, i into r so current is nothing but 0 0.32 into 30 which will give the answer as 9.4 volts 9.4 or 9.6 something like like that is what you're gonna get 9.4 9.6 uh, around that range is what you're gonna get so that would be the answer for this question i don't think that took about two minutes also but yes guys just the calculation part would take a little longer but using just ohm's law you can solve both the parts of the question 2016 board exam three marks easy people so 30 amperes and zero, uh, 30 uh, sorry 30 ohms and uh 9.6 volts would be the answer for this question that's all simple fifth question is also done 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 people moving on to the sixth question taken from 2015 board exam three mark question two to five three to five minutes we'll try to do in less than two the question is this what is the relation between potential difference and the current in a conductor stated in the form of a law name okay the relationship okay the relationship between the potential difference and the current in a conductor is stated in the form of a law name that law second part of the question is what does the slope of a voltage current graph for a conductor represent? Third part of the question is name the material used for making the connection wise. Awesome guys. It's a very easy question. Trust me, it takes, I think it takes 30 seconds to solve the question. Name the law that shows the relation between potential difference and current. Ohm's law. And if this, if you are if you are asked to state the Ohm's law, they've not asked you to state it. But if you want to state it, you can go ahead and state it. The, uh, the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference uh, when the uh, temperature is kept constant. Second part of the question. What is the slope of a VIF? graph of a conductor represent the resistance we have seen that before if you take a, a you know vi graph the slope would basically represent the resistance uh, of that particular conductor so this is the voltage this is the current it will re represent the resistance third part of the question name the material used for making the connecting wires which material do you generally use for making wires copper why do we use copper because it has less resistance because low resistance it has low resistance and because of that we use copper that's it, people. Three mark question now. I, I don't think it gets, gets it gets any more easier than this. So please, guys, please, 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 you know, don't stress yourself out so much because there are a lot of questions that can easily be, you know, answered just by reading the question. So please don't stress yourself out and you know uh, wear yourself out. Make sure that you you know uh, take it a little easy and solve these kind of questions as well. All right. Next is a 2014 board exam again, a three mark question, three to five minutes. Let's try to do it in less than two minutes. The question is the first part of the question is what is an ohmic resistor? An ohmic resistor is one which follows Ohm's law. That is what it is. And if you have a VI graph for that, so anything in the resistor that follows Ohm's law, the resistor that follows ohms law i want everyone to put it out in the chat box also try to answer it yourself this is that follows you if you want you see guys when you're answering the question pause the video and try to answer it yourself i'm going i know uh, i'm going according to my pace but yes people you can take your time because obviously it's a video so pause the video and try to do it by yourself try to solve the answers and you know uh what to say uh you know get better every day that's all i can say resistor that follows ohms law is what is called as uh, you know uh, ohmic resistor uh, and if you draw a vi graph of that the vi graph would basically be a linear graph it'll be a linear graph it'll be a straight line so that is how uh, you usually show the vi graph of an ohmic conductor or, or ohmic, ohmic resistor 
two copper wires are of the same length but one is thicker than the other all right two copper wires one is thicker than the other now the second the second part of the question is which wire will have more resistance and which higher will have which wire will have more specific resistance if you have two wires one is thin and the other is thick which will have more resistance the thinner wire would have more resistance people because again if you remember uh, resistance is indirectly proportional to area so greater the area lesser the resistance so because of that thinner wire would have greater resistance whereas the thicker wire would have lesser resistance which wire will have more specific resistance specific resistance would be the same for both it will be same for both why because specific resistance is nothing but the resistivity it does not depend on the dimension that was the very first question that we solved it does not depend on the dimension it only depends on the material itself it is a property of the material so it does not depend on the thickness or the length right so that is the answer people another three mark question to take it took us what less than 30 maybe 30 seconds to one minute that's all we do my god the eighth question 2009 9 question four marks four to seven minutes we'll try to do it in less than three it's a super easy question state ohms law i don't have to repeat it again we've already done it several times but again for all those who still are not able to uh, you know uh, answer it ohms law is nothing but the law that re that represents the relationship between current and voltage so it states that ohms law states that the the current flowing through our conductor uh, is directly proportional to the potential difference across the uh, you know across the two ends when the temperature is kept constant then when the temperature is kept constant that is what is called as ohms law the formula is nothing but v is equal to i into r dramatically illustrate illustrate how you would connect a key a battery a voltmeter uh, uh sorry dramatically it's diagram di diagrammatically <laughs> diagrammatically explain dramatic all right illustrate how you how would you connect a key a battery a voltmeter an ammeter an unknown resistance r and a rheostat so that it can be used to above to verify the above law so again guys you just have to draw a, you know a diagram so basic i mean a circuit diagram so first of all draw the uh the cell so you have the cell it's connected to the uh ammeter ammeter has to be connected in series uh then you have the resistor which you do not know what the resistance is we'll call this as r then you have the voltmeter which is connected in parallel with that of the uh, resistor then you have the rheostat so you have the rheostat so you have the key over here let me just draw the key first then you have the rheostat So yeah, this is what it would basically look like. So yeah, uh, this one. Let me just erase this part. Oh, okay. Sorry, people. Yes, yes, that. Yes. So yeah, this is what your circuit diagram would look like. And yeah, you have connected all of this. So how would you connect a key, a battery, a voltmeter, an ammeter, a non resistance, and a resistor? So it can be used to verify the above law. So you can see that when you increase the current, when you increase the current. flowing to the conductor you see that the voltage will also start to increase so that's how you verify it it's as simple as that and you see that you know the resistance would also remain constant there'll be no change in the resistance itself but yeah as you increase the current you see that the voltmeter also would start to uh, you know the value of that also would start to change so that is it guys that is it another four mark question 2009 board exam question as simple as that so according to ohms law you've already seen this so this is what the conduct this is what the circuit would look like so you have the ammeter the voltmeter the ammeter is connected in series the voltmeter connected in parallel and again why are they connected in series and parallel because ammeter has very less resistance or oh, uh, uh, a voltmeter on the other hand has very high resistance that's why it's connected in parallel because in parallel connection as you guys know resistance would be less and yes again how do you produce it to prove it as you increase the current flowing through the circuit the voltmeter or you would also see you see that the voltmeter would also start to show greater values and that's how you relate the two right so that's it people that is it that by that we have completed all of the topics that we have meant to complete the next session will be completing all of these as well these can get a little bit more intense but yeah they are, they are very very important so i'll catch you guys in the next one people that's it this is your homework for today by the way 2010 board exam question people let me know what is the answer in the comment section let's see who gets the fastest let's see who's going to be the homework rocker in the next one a substance which has nearly zero resistance at a temperature of 1 kelvin what is such a substance called as second part of the question is state any two factors which affects the resistance of a metallic wire go ahead solve the answer 
put it on the comment section let's see who gets it right thank you for joining people that's it from today that's it for today's session that uh, uh that is the end of uh, current electricity one i'll see you guys tomorrow with current electricity two until the next time we meet this is anup signing off for the day have a great evening people do not forget to subscribe do not forget to check out the link in the description ame pros the code check it out because trust me guys you'll definitely thank me for it later see you guys in the next one take care of yourselves stay safe and catch you guys later bye bye guys take care